Hello and welcome to Infinity. RGB thinking means understanding what's happening with the red, green and blue of each pixel and over other areas and consequently being able to make better decisions. The basics of this is that in each pixel there's a red, a green and blue which can have values going from 0 to 100% which in 8-bit system is 255. And you can look at this and say one of those colours is the maximum and one of those colours has the minimum value. And there's another one in between. And by understanding the relationships of this, we can make more sense of it. In particular, the gap at the top, above the maximum, that determines how dark or black the picture is. The gap at the bottom indicates how much whiteness there is or how light the picture is, the minimum. And in between, the gap between the the maximum and the minimum tells you something about the hue and particularly the saturation. So let's do this. Let's take a picture here and we'll put a rectangle in up here. And then if we set these two different values like this, then the bottom one here, if I bring the bottom one up, you can see it getting lighter, and that's because I'm bringing this up here and increasing the whiteness. So if the minimum is right near the top, you've got almost white. If you take these down to the bottom, then you're bringing down the maximum, it's getting darker. And if it's in the middle, then you've got kind of a combination, you've got light and dark. And so what this means is just by looking at a colour, you can start to say, ah, the minimum is going to be somewhere up here. The maximum is going to be somewhere down here. And as you bring these together, they become more grey. You can also look at the hue. And it's worth remembering the 12 tertiary colours in primary and secondary. So the primary colours, red, green and blue, straightforward. Then you get the secondary colours of cyan, magenta and yellow. So for example here these numbers here 255 is the maximum so it's the maximum red, the maximum green and no blue gives you yellow. But you can also do this with the tertiary colours. So orange here is the maximum red, half the green and no blue. And just those half steps gives you a lot of control. So if we draw this again here and if I stretch this out here that halfway mark here gives me the teal with the middle one if I got down the bottom here this is blue so in other words when you've got one high and two low it's going to be close to a primary color if you bring this up here if you've got two high and one low that looks more like cyan and it's close to a secondary colour and if it's somewhere in the middle then we're going to get a tertiary colour. Again this just by looking at the colour this lets us guess at where it is. And then we can start doing things with it and we'll look at the colours we've got here and what we can do with it. It's a little bit dull here so let's look at this area down here and it would be nice if this was kind of a brighter f version of the one that's there. And the way to do this, if I take the pipette, drag it down here, look over here, and we can just click that somewhere that seems about okay, that puts it up here. Then I click the pipette again and it puts it into the primary colour here. And you can see you've got kind of a line down here between these, and this is because it's orange. If I bring this out more, you can see the colour here gets brighter. Now I stretch this down, this gets brighter still. We cut them in the same ratio as we had before. So I can add colour into here by adding a pixel layer here. Get a brush, make sure I've got that colour selected. And I can paint over here. Make this very much bigger. I can even put areas like this. But I can then, that's a bit solid, so I blend it in with something like soft light. 
and then you've got a before and after effect. I can also change the colour in here and so I could for example make that more a red colour by dragging this down so there's more space at the top so red is close to the top and then I can paint that in and get more of a bit more red into that in the corner. Then I could say what about up here? Let's use a different technique for this. So if I can address this green up here and to do that I'm going to go down to the shapes here, go to the ellipse tool and I'm now going to draw myself a shape here which kind of covers that. Then I'm going to make it a soft edge so I'm going to go to the FX here, turn on the Gaussian blur, turn up the radius here, maybe we can type in here let's say 200 to make it even softer edge and then we want a colour for it. So to get the colour for that let's just turn it off for the moment we can get rid of this. Go to the pipette again here and look for a colour that looks somewhere in the middle there. That's this. Click to bring that in and you can see the ratio of things here. And we've put this into the ellipse here so it's already there. But we can change that if we want. And we'll just blend it in. Let's keep to stick to soft light, that's a bit easier. Let's make it a bit brighter, we'll move these up in this kind of ratio. Look how much we brighten this up, so from before to after. If it's colour, it's, it's polluting down here a bit, what I can do is go to a mask here, get a brush, set that to black, and paint that in down here just to make sure we retain it. A little grayscale here, let's bring that back to RGB. Because what we're going to do next is we're going to look at this little area here. So go back to the background here and we'll go to the selection brush and we'll paint around the edge here using the Alt key to subtract Because in this, remember, I've got snap to edges set there. Let's bring it up here so we can see that better. Then I'm going to do a refine. And then paint along the edges of that. To get this fully selected. Just to see, let's just rethink that, please. And that looks okay. Let's apply that, and I've got that selected. But now then I want a, to pick this colour here to improve that. Or I can do it just from my knowledge, going, I want to make this look like a sky. And sky is often teal, so which means I've got lots of blue, a bit of green, in fact somewhere in the middle. I can vary it with just that middle colour. So I'm going to put in a fill layer. And that's already in that colour. Let's just drag it up the top so you can see in, in sequence. Put the blend that in. You know, stick to soft light. Overlay. Overlay is a bit bright. No, just stick to soft light. And then we can vary the colour here by just dragging the middle one. We can make it a little bit lighter if we need to by pulling up the bottom, make it a bit darker or taking a little bit of that colour out because we're reducing the width there to find the colour that we want here that looks reasonably like it's a sky. And then when we like that, then that's fine. Hit Control D. Don't need the marching ants anymore. So there we go. By looking at the RGB and controlling it, we've gone from this to this. That's it, and thank you very much for watching.